Now, that's what brought me to reading all four Gospels. I said, you know, I'm always using the whole Bible to bring the first principle, but Monday morning I got up and I knew I was just to read through all four Gospels. That's one of my jobs for you is to seek the Lord. And I knew I was to read through all four Gospels to see what he was trying to do in those disciples to get them to understand the new. Because they didn't get it. When he raised Lazarus from the dead, he looked at him and said, how long are you going to be with me? I have tried to explain everything to you for three years, and you hadn't gotten a thing. See, he had, he had spent all this time creating a prototype. Peter got it. It lasted for 15 minutes, and then he looked at Peter in Matthew 16 and said, you're going to have to be sifted, buddy. Because you have got so much in your own thinking process and emotions, you'll never be what you've been being trained for for three years unless Satan sifted out of you. And you think sometimes one of us says something hard to you? I mean, Jesus filleted them half the time. Because, I, you know, you just want to look at it. My gosh, they are dumb. They, they're not thinking. They, they haven't noticed anything. So, this is what I went through. Here's what developed the prototype for upon this rock I will build my church. Remember, when it was time, everybody say time. Now, here's, your, here's what Issachar is about. When it was time, the Lord knew he had to go back and connect with last season so he could come forward. That's one thing. Because John, in the midst of all that had been going on, was just baptizing people because they needed to repent. We do need to repent. Tell somebody we need to repent. And he would baptize them. He would say, you snake, you're going under. See? And he would, they would come out from everywhere. And he would baptize them. That was the move of God. Wasn't anything wrong with that move of God. If you wanted to get in the move of God, that was the move of God. And the Lord knew his first step was to connect with last season. Now, some of you are trying to get into the new without seeing the divine connection from the last season. Don't do that. You're going to have to see how you're connected. Yeshua knew all these prophecies about the kingdom. He knew the book of Isaiah. He was a rabbi, as Rabbi told us last week. He knew everything. He was an incredible teacher, but he also knew, I'm going to have to go out and get in this move of God because it is prophesied I'm going to get a new baptism. Tell somebody a new baptism. A new baptism. The only way you can get a new baptism is to come out of the old baptism. So he went back, he got in the old baptism. John saw him and said, I know you. You don't even fit this move of God. And the Lord said, unless I get in it, I can't go into the new. You can't just get rid of the old to get into the new. And so he goes and John baptizes him. You know why? 
because there was a prophecy that John's baptism would be of repentance and the new baptism would have fire in it. Everybody say fire. And the only way it could have fire was that there had to be the Spirit of God come down in a new way. Look at somebody and say, we're looking for fire in this new season. Fire! Here's the next major thing. At every new divided moment, there is an open heaven somewhere. It happened with Peter when Father revealed himself to him. It happened with Yeshua. All of a sudden, the heavens open. The Lord God, Father, speaks. And all of a sudden, the Spirit comes down on him. Here was the prototype being developed. We're going to have to have an open heaven every time we go into a new season with a spirit-led life. The spirit came down on it. You could see it. You could hear it. All of a sudden, the atmosphere shifted. When you hear those prophecies this morning, the atmosphere shifted. Yes. Then the Spirit's first assignment to create the new prototype. Hear what I just said to you. The Spirit's first assignment from Father to the Son to create the new prototype was, I'm going to lead you into the wilderness. Part of the new is called wilderness warfare. That means you're always in the new, going to have a place that you're going through the middle, the midbar. And in the midst of it is where Satan, your enemy, and the Lord brought that into the mix of the new. Satan is always going to be in the mix of your new. Wow. It's a prototype. Wow. A lot of people would love never to have any warfare or never have to face the enemy off. Ain't going to happen. It's part of every new season. I, I, somebody needs to tell you so you're not so confused. <laughs> so you're not so idealistic. And all of a sudden, he's led into the wilderness by the Spirit, but he comes out with power. Everybody say power is part of the new. Power! Say power! Say power! That was how that prototype began its formation. And remember, it's always attempting to bring forth something that's been prophesied into reality. And so, once the Lord gets out with power, everybody say power. Power. He said, I'm going to have to find some new relationships. I'm going to have to find who really wants to go with me into this next season. Because I know everybody is not going to want to walk in this prototype that Father is creating. So I'm going to have to find some people. I'm going to have to... Find, and you know who he started with? Only two left the last wineskin. Andrew and Philip. All the rest of them stayed with John. John didn't leave the last wineskin. 
Let me tell you something. Some of your best friends ain't going to go on where you going. Preach that, CP. Come on. Come on. It's just that some of us have been so pulverized and torn apart and sifted by the Spirit of God, we wouldn't know how to go backwards if we tried. So we might know where, not know where we're going, but we know it ain't back where we've come from. 